fact of the significance of this hole um, is is truly monumental for the company. Uh, you know, the, the high grade surface footprint that we've encountered over 20 square kilometers, uh, the, the feeder veins that we've identified, the channel sampling that's occurred over this huge footprint, boom, within six holes, we've found a, a plus kilo intercept, which is an extremely expedited uh, hit. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. Welcome. This is the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, your host, and it's time for a sponsor update for Tier One Silver, a company we have been following since its spin out from Orin Resources. We're here now with CEO Peter Dembicki and Senior VP of Exploration David Smithson, who's down at the Core Shack right now in Peru. And well, we're quite confident that uh, we knew this day was coming intersect of uh, 400, 1,480 grams per ton of silver over a meter. Quite extraordinary. Peter, this appears to be the exact moment you were waiting for. Sure is, Kerry. I mean, this is uh, probably something more that Dave's been working on for, for years. You know, I'm fortunate enough to, to parachute in at the last minute here and get this thing listed and funded and everything. But uh, uh, the work that has been done to date the fact of the significance of this hole um, is is truly monumental for the company. Uh, you know, the, the high grade surface footprint that we've encountered over 20 square kilometers, uh, the, the feeder veins that we've identified, the channel sampling that's occurred over this huge footprint, uh, you know, was always in question is, is this some sort of surface phenomenon? Is, is it only occurring on surface? Will they ever find something underground or does it exist underground? And we got indications in our first batch of holes. There were some, some smoky indications there that we were close. Uh, but since we made that pivot after hole three to drill directly under these veins, um, you know, boom, within six holes, we found a, a plus kilo intercept, which is an extremely expedited uh, hit in the, in, in, in the sector. So uh, truly game changing for us. And no longer is this a concept or a theory that's driving, uh, you know, our direction is geology. And and now that we've 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 had this intercept, you know, it's it's game on. We're we're just getting revved up here. Hey, so so Dave, uh, welcome back. And you've identified five major vein feeder vein structures. The Madre vein, that's the one where you're at now. Your whole whole six uh, intersected it. Uh, what's your feeling? Are you feeling vindicated? Yeah, I think it's um, it's following suit with what's happening, what's what with what's happened up to now. I mean, everything in this project's always been on the upswing. Yeah, we identified this thing from a from a stream sediment, and then we went on the stream sediment, and there's veins, and we sampled those veins, and they were high grade. We expanded the footprint; it was there. We did the trenches. We saw the intercepts in the trenches, and we just drilled our first good feeder structure. It was actually um, three and a half meters of almost a kilo, uh, half a kilogram of silver with that internal of a meter of 1.48 kilograms. So the structure's got a bit of width to it. And um, it's it's just showing again that we're onto, the, we're doing things in the right order. We're looking at the system in the right way. And the question of um, the context of this, of this intercept is important because it's much bigger than just this intercept. This project is much more interesting and much bigger than that intercept. You know, this is just one intercept on the road here right now. And we have drilled uh, four of the five feeders to date, the fifth one being Cambaya, which we can't reach right now in our current drill permit. We hit 20 metres of almost 300 silver on, on that structure. We know where it is. We're permitting to go drill it. But we've drilled the other four, and, and we have results for is the first result through the, the, the mother feeder and uh, we got that result. So we've, we've drilled the structure four times now. So we've got those results coming down the pipeline as well. So, um, but in addition to the mother, I mean, we've been saying they could individually or collectively equal a discovery here. Any one of these structures has the potential of those five feeders and we've intersected mineralization on all of them except for the Cambaya. So 
you know, these, these systems require huge amounts of drilling. And what we've identified on the, on the, the mother structure, on the Madre, is that it's got about a kilometre of strike. And we've just tagged it once. And so we've shown that the mineralisation continues. It's a near-surface intercept. We've got high grade close to surface and we've got high grade all over the, over the surface as well. So the project continues to deliver for us. Um, the, the scientific work and, you know, everything we're doing with the drills and all the different um, multidisciplinary uh, scientific studies we do it always point us to the, these sorts of outcomes. And so we're really impressed with the intercept, but it's one intercept in a much larger story. All of these veins could have the potential to produce a similar result. Yeah, and you're just, uh, as uh, as Peter said, this is the infancy of a uh, discovery, right? Yeah, yeah, it's still, a, it was still a long road. Um, yeah, a structure like this may take, you know, 100,000 metres of drilling to actually know what it is. But I'll be happy to drill 100,000 metres of intercepts like that, I can promise you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got to be exciting. So, Peter, as far as where Tier 1 Silver is now, as opposed to where it was perhaps a couple of weeks ago. Can you just expound on that a little and what it means for investors and their potential payout uh, down the road? Yeah. I mean, again, I, I, it's, it's Dave's job to search globally when he's looking at uh, what we have on our hands here to, to source out comparison. Uh, what's out there? What looks similar? Uh, how did that go for them? How did they come across their discovery? Was it them who initially drilled it, or was it a company before them that, that tried to do it and didn't get it? And it's my job in the capital markets to source out comparisons for publicly traded companies. And, uh, you know, so there's a, there's a great uh, company based out of Vancouver with assets in Mexico called Business Silk, and they've had an incredible run over the last couple of years. And I would never compare our company today to where they are today, but look at Vizsla, you know, in summer of 2020. Uh, their valuation and their, their share price trading around 35 cents. And then they hit these first two uh, discovery books, these, these great intercepts, and it catapulted their, their entire company um, from 30 cents to, to $3 a share in a matter of a week. And, you know, this is what we're in it for, right? Um, Bizzle's done a fantastic job, and now they're proving it out as a much bigger asset. And, um, you know, we're, we're right, we're in that, like, pre-discovery kind of phase. And for shareholders, it's, it's an extremely exciting time because, you know, as much as we are trying to expedite this whole process and, and put a discovery on everybody's plate overnight, you know, we've got to, we've got to have patience with it. Uh, but this is, you know, six hole, this is hole number six, and it is truly at the beginning. And so we, we love the fact that we have, you know, 15 holes that'll be completed in this, this first phase uh, we're currently on hole number 13. Uh, we are, we are going to be wrapping up mid-December. Uh, and, and then, you know, that's just Kurbai. And let's not forget Hurricane. Hurricane sometimes gets lost in it just because Kurbai is so active and so exciting. Uh, but this, this other property, Hurricane Silver, is coming, coming to the forefront. We have 15-plus trenches coming from Hurricane. Uh, we love the indications that we're seeing up there. Uh, again, we'll have to pause mid-December for, for rainy season, but when that data comes backward, we have two very exciting properties for shareholders to, to really hang their hat on. And this first, you know, plus kilo intercept was just uh, a real nice feather in the cap for Dave. He, he knows there's a lot more work to be done. We all know that, but uh, truly exciting time for the company because, uh, again, as I said, goes from theory, it goes from concept that whole vindicated, validated everything. And it's, uh, it's a really good feeling. And now, and now we press ahead and we get really aggressive with this and, uh, and hopefully have some similar, better results. Yeah, which is what we're all hoping for. So Dave, you, you always told us about your dynamic drill plan, which you altered the plan as you were drilling, kind of like building, building a skyscraper and changing, changing the uh, plans as it's being constructed. But, how does that figure in with the uh, end of phase one, beginning of phase two? Uh, well, it figures in to keep following up on those good results. So texturally, the Madre has been the best looking structure so far. And that's the job initially. The job initially is get onto the best structure as early as you can. We got onto it on the sixth hole. 
And we've modified our program to continue to, to drill that structure out. And what's coming before the end of the season is um, this, this structure was drilled right at the southern extremity of the structure. And a kilometre to the north, it's, we've got it mapped in, in, in spectral data, in field mapping and in geochemistry, and we know where the structure is. And so our last modification, which is our fifth mod modification since we started drilling mid-year, is, um, is uh, directed towards um, realising uh, more potential on that structure. And so if we continue one kilometre to the north, that structure intersects the volcanic edifice of the paleo volcano, which formed these uh, silver and gold veins. So we just started drilling underneath those, um, those uh, underneath the volcanic edifice, and we're, we're hitting more veins. So we'll just continue to drill along that corridor and we'll see how it varies, whether it swells and pinches or they do swell and pinch and it's just a question of volume. So we're just gonna try and get as many holes as we can before the end of the year. We're gonna follow along up on this result um, we've got a, uh, we've got some other nice looking holes coming down the pipeline that we've already drilled so we're going to keep following up on those until the end of the year we're at about four and a half thousand meters we've drilled uh we're in our 13th hole since uh mid-year and we believe we're going to get another two more before we pause for the wet season mid-december hey do you think that uh, any of these other holes could show results as good as hole number six? I mean, obviously you're hopeful, but but you have a better idea of the structure and the geology now. Potentially, there could be more great news in store. Yeah, there, there potentially could be more great news in store, 100%. <laughs> uh, so, so, Peter, you mentioned Hurricane. What's the status of that project now? So we were just granted access uh, a few months ago. Uh, so we had the opportunity to send a couple of our top geologists into the field, uh, do some sampling, some channel sampling, just really getting a feel for the project. Um, and uh, there's, some, there's some cool indications. There's these, uh, these old adits that were discovered that uh, and maybe Dave can tell you how old they might be. They're filled with water, so it's, it's tough to get access, but um, they can sometimes go two to 300 meters into the ground you know, and, and no one's going to do that on an independent, small, personal, little mining unless they're chasing high grade. So it's nothing indicative of, of um, high grade underground or, or anything that they've encountered. But it's a fun story, fun little discovery that we've gotten up there. But again, uh, we have a bunch of trench results, channel samples in the in the lab uh, that we should be receiving over the next four or five weeks that we'll, we'll come to market with. And it'll really help us kind of gain an understanding of how we want to attack it. But Everything looks really good off the start, and uh, it's a great compliment to Curve Eye. It's just like a cherry on top. Yeah, I remember when you got the uh, initial uh, surface samples on Curabaya, and then the channel samples and the grades were just bonanza grade. And then the concern is always, well, is it is it below the ground uh, as good as it above? But here, Dave, you've pretty much uh, proven that uh, what lies beneath is at least as good or perhaps even better than what's above ground. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's I mean, we're really pumped on the result, but there's a lot of relief as well because you just never know. It's the miners gamble every time you drill underneath something on surface, they do disappear. And epithermal systems are particularly notorious for just disappearing. And they can stop and they can start. So, you know, we've put some holes through it along its strike length for a kilometre now, and we've hit veins. So this result's telling us that it's got good texture, it's got, uh, and it's got high grade. And that high grade on surface, you know, a lot of people have bet against this project because it almost seems too good to be true. And uh, it doesn't come along that often. So it's a real standout in, in market because it's unusual. And um, people have bet against it. And so there is a certain amount of validation for Peter and I. But um, we don't really care about that. What we care about is drilling intercepts for our investors. And um, this shows that there is high grade at depth. And if we continue to drill, theoretically, there should be more to be had. So, so now the game is basically just keep drilling. You got the structures better mapped. And you'll continue to adjust your uh, mapping, of course. But you, you're on to something. You know where it is. And... It's okay to feel good. Success is always the best revenge. Never forget that. So, so Peter, uh, I guess at some point uh, we're going to have to go raise some more capital perhaps, but we're sitting okay now with company funds. 
Yeah, sitting, sitting comfortable right now. And again, we we pause our operations, pause our drilling mid December for rainy season. Uh, so the burn rate drops significantly. We're good through uh, through Q2 of next year. So it gives us an opportunity for well, it gives Dave an opportunity to catch his breath uh, and really analyze all the data that's come in for this from this first phase. Um, gives us corporately a, a chance to really put a strategy together and, and make sure that. You know, if we do come to market for anything, it's uh, every dollar is accounted for um, and, and to keep us as lean and mean as possible, uh, but also be super aggressive. Right. So, um, you know, I get it. The market uh, I've been in capital markets for some time and I understand the, uh, the impatience and, and the, the willingness to, to have a discovery tomorrow or yesterday. Uh, and and that's, that's not lost on us. Uh, but we got to do it right, and and we're going to do it right. And Dave is the most detail oriented guy uh, I've ever met, and you know his history uh, just you know uh, it, it proves that with with what he's done in the past and the discoveries he's made and, and sold for shareholders. So uh, stick with us. We have a lot of fun coming in the next few months, and uh, it's going to be a great ride. And, and I'm sure besides just the institutional. Uh, interest, which no doubt this will spur, you're probably also going to get some uh, industry attention from uh, from those who are interested in projects like these. For sure. I mean, just given our address, and again, we've, we've, we've come across the first epithermal precious metal system on this prolific belt in Southern Peru. And so right away, that puts a lot of eyes on us. Our neighbors are some of the biggest in the industry. You've seen the land position, who surrounds us, who's been really aggressive in picking up land. So yeah, we have uh, a lot of eyes on us, a lot of incoming inquiries. People want to know. They want to know. And uh, this is the fun part because, um, you know, we, we get an opportunity to, uh, to take this on ourselves. This is a group that loves the opportunity. They love the risk, the early stages, and we want to make the discovery ourselves. So um, it's that much bigger of a payout for our shareholders and supporters down the road. All right. And uh, like we say, success, nothing uh, succeeds like success. We're at the very beginning of it. Like you said, the infancy, but uh, but this is a very healthy infant that has a long life ahead of them. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for coming on, Peter. Always a pleasure. David, let you get back to work. I know you're uh, in Peru and you've got things to do. Uh, Look, go over to the website. That's uh, tier1silver.com. Make sure you sign up for notifications. I got this press release just like the rest of you did, and I immediately got on the phone to them. And the tickers in the U.S., TSLVF, and in Canada, TSLV. Gentlemen, great news. We'll touch base with you in a little while when we hear from you again. Thanks, Kerry. Financial Survival Network.